Hi guys. So a lot of us have a lot of time on our hands right about now. And I thought that this would be a really great time to learn a new skill. So I have a few questions for you. Ever wish you could knit socks? Have you tried knitting socks and found it frustrating? Does heel turning and kitchener stitch give you fits? Well, I have a really easy and most efficient way I know to knit socks. And since many of us have nothing but time right now, I thought, why not that use that time to learn a new knitting skill? So I'd like to announce that starting next week, I'm going to be starting a free video class. And I'm going to, what I'm going to be teaching is knitting ribbed tube socks, toe up, two at a time, using the magic loop method. Did I mention it's free? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to pay anything for this class. I'm going to be uploading the videos right to YouTube and you will be able to access them at any time. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this now is because I wanted to give you time to gather the supplies that you'll need. Um, some of them you may already have and you don't have to worry about ordering anything. Um, others you might need to hit up your uh, local yarn shop who might be um, shipping orders or you might want to reach out to a supplier like Knit Picks or um, Webb's the Yarn Store, something like that. Anyway, so here are some of the supplies that you will need. Uh, first of all, of course, you're going to need yarn. Um, you do not necessarily need fingering weight yarn. Um, even though we're going to be knitting socks, if you've never used fingering weight yarn before, you might want, not want to jump in with fingering weight right away. Um, you can use uh, worsted weight yarn. That's what these are. Um, you could also use DK. You could use sport weight. Or, again, you can use fingering weight if you're used to it or if you just would like to use it. That's fine as well. Um, now, you are going to need certain amounts depending on what uh, weight you're using. If you're using worsted weight yarn, you should probably count on needing at least 293 yards or 268 meters. If you're using DK weight, you're going to need about 337 yards or 308 meters. If you're using sport weight, you're going to need either 416, or rather you're going to need 416 yards or 380 meters. Or if you're using fingering weight, you will need 457 yards or 418 meters. I'm going to put all of those numbers in the uh, comments for the video just so that you have it for easy reference. Um, so these are estimates. I should mention that. I got these uh, calculations from the Jimmy Bean Wool Yarn Calculator. Um, again, since they're estimates, you might need not as much or you might need a little bit more. It's generally a good idea to take 10% of that and add it on to the amount that you um, think you might need just to be on the safe side. It's always better to have more, too much yarn than not enough, right? <laughs> okay. Um, again, these are basically going to be our practice yarns. So you could use turquoise and blush pink if you want. It's totally fine. Um, you don't. You don't even have. They don't have to match. They don't have to go together. This is just for practice. Now, obviously, um, you know you might want to do something with the socks once you're done with them. You could wear them for yourself. You can give them as a fun gift. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Um, the idea, obviously, is just to learn how to do how to knit the socks, and then um, you'll be able to transfer those skills to knitting socks for other people, which is, of course, the reason we're learning how to do this, right? Okay, so next thing you're going to need is a circular needle that's at least 40 inches long. That is really important. Again, we are going to be using the magic loop method, which means they absolutely have to be at least 40 inches long or else it, was, it won't work very well. Um, these are actually 47 inches, so that's great. Um, I recommend one of four different brands. I recommend 
Chiago, I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, I will, of course, put these in the comments as well. Um, these are Chiago. That's probably my favorite circular needle, circular knitting needle brand. I also really like Knitter's Pride. Um, Knit Picks is also really good, and I, I've also recently tried Haya Haya Sharps and found that they're very good as well. Um, again, these are all brands that I myself have tried and so I myself can recommend. If you happen to have another brand that you like really well, it's totally fine to use those. These are just my own recommendations based on my own, own experiences. Um, Oh, and be sure that the circular needle size that you choose go with whatever yarn weight you're using. Um, for instance, these are worsted weight, and so they recommend anywhere between size 6 and size 9. Um, the needles that I just allowed to drop onto the floor, uh, those are size 7, so they would work really well with um, worsted weight yarn. Just go by the uh, yarn label recommendation. Whatever they say um, you need should work just fine with your yarn, depending on the weight of your yarn. Okay, one last thing that you're going to need are stitch markers. Now, I say you'll need stitch markers, which is true. Um, these are some stitch markers that I happen to have on hand. Um, I also have some of these. These are um, the kind that kind of clasps shut. You can use those. Um, or if you'd rather not buy stitch markers, it is completely acceptable to just take a loop of yarn and tie it together and create your own stitch marker just like I did here. See, there's there's a little knot at the end. You can see you can do that. That works in a pinch. Um, I've, when I was habitually in the habit of, <laughs> habitually in the habit, when I used to leave stitch markers all over my house and then I could never find them, um, I would do this and it worked just fine. Um, so, Again, use what you have, or if you just feel like this is a great time to buy yourself some new stitch markers, you can do that as well. So that's what you're going to need. That's really all you need, yarn, long circular needle, and stitch markers. Now, here's what I'm going to be demonstrating. First of all, I'm going to be demonstrating a particular kind of cast-on called the Turkish cast-on. And this is a way that you can start to knit socks from the toe up. This, by the way, this is a recent sock that I knitted, here's its match, using this method. So in case you're wondering what the socks actually look like once they're done, it's a little too long for the frame, but that's what they look like when they're done. Um, but what the what the Turkish, Turkish cast-on does is it allow, allows you to start from the toes and then knit up. Why do we want to do that? First of all, um, you can start from the toes, and when you start socks from the toes, it makes it a lot easier to finish the socks when they're the right length, um, because then all you have to do is bind off and you're done. Um, as opposed to when you're knitting socks from the cuff down, you have to kind of guess when to start the toes, and in my mind it makes it a little bit trickier. So that's one reason we're going to do the Turkish cast on. And there's one more very important reason. It's super easy. If you can wrap yarn around needles, you can do the Turkish cast on. Yes, it really is that easy. So that's what I'll be demonstrating. Demonstrating. The uh, another thing I'm going to be demonstrating is knitting socks two at once. Now you might wonder why would you want to knit socks two at a time? Isn't that twice as much work? Yes, it is. But number one. There's no dreaded second sock syndrome. I'm sure you've heard of second sock syndrome. If not, I'm going to explain it to you. Second sock syndrome is when you've knitted one sock and then you realize, now I have to knit another one. I put all that work into knitting this sock and I finished it, but I still have to knit a second one. Well, when you knit them at the same time, you don't have to worry about that. Once you're done, you are 100% done, period, finito, aside from weaving in ends. Um, the other reason that 
I always knit socks two at a time, and that's what I'm going to be teaching you, is because that is your guarantee that your socks will be exactly the same length and exactly the same width, which means you will have two socks that actually match. Now, they don't have to match necessarily. If you want to make mismatched socks by doing different colors, different stripes, whatever, you can, but they will both fit the same way, which is very important. Um, I'm also going to be demonstrating Magic Loop, which again, you may have heard of, um, you may have even tried it. I'm going to hopefully help you understand exactly how Magic Loop works. Now, why Magic Loop? Several reasons. Number one, it's just fun. <laughs> and hopefully once I show you how to do Magic Loop, you'll understand just how much fun it is. Uh, another reason is when you're using Magic Loop, hold on just a second, I'm going to retrieve <laughs> my fall knitting needle. When you use Magic Loop, again, since you're using one large circular, one long circular needle, you won't lose a needle because they're connected. So that's always helpful. Um, that's what, that's an advantage that this method has over, say, using double pointed needles. Um, another reason is you don't have to worry about your cable being too long or too short as long as it's at least 40 inches. Um, sometimes when you're using a circular needle to knit in the round by itself on its own without the magic loop method, um, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes whether you need to have a 16 inch needle or a 24 inch needle or what have you. Um, magic loop takes all that guesswork away. Just get at least 40 inches and you're golden. And finally, there's only two needle tips to, to worry about. So it's really just like regular flat knitting. So that's the other thing I'm going to demonstrate. And one more thing I'm going to demonstrate is the spiral rib stitch. You see how they're kind of, they're not up and straight up and down. They kind of go move in this spiral. I'm going to show you how to do that. And why is this such a great method for tube socks? Because two reasons actually. Uh, number one, it will fit a wide variety of feet. When I first knitted one of these pairs of socks, I had every single person in my family, including me, <laughs> uh, try the socks on. And guess what? They fit everybody's feet. Uh, no matter how small their feet were, I have the, I actually have the smallest feet in my family now, <laughs> and uh, or how big the feet were, they all fit which is really great for when you're knitting socks for charity because then you don't have to worry about the socks fitting properly. So that's one reason. The second reason is a fun one in my opinion. It's really easy to memorize. Once you've gone through the uh, stitch pattern, and I'm going to show you how to do that, um, you won't have to keep looking at a pattern. Now I am going to have a pattern um, that you'll be able to follow. Um, but you will probably find very quickly that you're not even paying any attention to the pattern because you're just keeping track of the number of rounds and you'll see. <laughs> just trust me on this. You'll see. It's really easy to memorize. I never look. I look at, the, I, I look at my pattern um, when I'm starting the, the sock, but once I've gotten past the toes, I don't need the pattern. I just know what to do, and you will too. All right, so that's it. That's my announcement for you about the knitting to ripped tube socks, toe up, two at a time using the magic loop method and using the spiral rib stitch. So I'm really excited to get started. Um, I'm going to be sending classes out um, hopefully once a week. Uh, and they will go out, they will, they will be uploaded to YouTube, but they will be, you'll be notified when there is a new video via email. So if you want to sign up, I really encourage you to make sure that you are subscribed to my newsletter. I won't be notifying on any social media or anything like that as far as when the new classes are available. It's just going to be via my newsletter. So please make sure you're signed up for that. 
um, I will have a way for you to opt out if for whatever reason you don't want to be notified of new classes. That's fine. I won't, my feelings won't be hurt, but I will have a way for you to opt out if you want to opt out. But if you don't want to opt out, then you will continue getting notifications of new classes. So I'm really excited about this. I hope you are as well. Um, I feel like this is a great opportunity for us to, as knitters, to be able to help people. And as I've mentioned many times, socks are actually the most frequently needed piece of clothing in uh, homeless shelters. So I don't know about you, but I think we can all agree that people who don't have homes, they are in really, this is a really bad time for that right now because it's kind of hard to um, stay home if you don't have a home. Know what I mean? So anyway, so I think these are, this is going to be a really fantastic way for knitters to help people during this time of crisis. Anyway, so I'm really excited to be teaching this class and I hope you're excited too and I can't wait to get started. I will see you next week with our first class. Bye-bye.